Bray Sherrod, and I am going to go through my Publisher 2013 class. First, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And before we get into opening Publisher, I always would like to show you a couple of places on the Clemson webpage. So I'm going to go to www.clemson.edu. So get rid of this stuff. Okay, and I'm going to search on color. If you search on the word color, it will bring you to a place where they have the brand colors for Clemson. So if you're working in Publisher or Word or PowerPoint or anywhere else and you'd like to make sure you have the official Clemson Orange, this is where you can get it. And this is the hex code version here on this page, but you can convert it um, into decimal if you need it depending on the kind of application you're using but there they are additionally on this page you're gonna find some of the other guidelines for branding for example if you go to stationery you're gonna see some of the recommended business cards the logo guidelines and these did change a few years ago the um, tiger paw used to be off limits the seal used to be what we used for say business cards now it's reversed we're using more tiger paw and the seal is reserved for the president's use additionally if you poke around on this page you're going to find um, photographs uh, that are you know free free for you to use when you're working with any kind of documents for Clemson University and I'm going to be using a few pictures I got from here in my sample projects in just a few moments oh, and here's also a logo so you can download logos pictures and so forth from there all right now PowerPoint 2013 I have it docked right here so I'm going to open it and when it opens just like the other office 2013 products it starts out with a slightly different look on the first screen it gives you the choice of going into a blank page and just starting from there or you can look at a template or you have um, some uh, options up here at the top for types of project you're getting ready to work on if you're going to be working on a brochure or a card or a certificate or a flyer if you pick that it's going to show you some both blank and template type options that you can use or you can search online for a template if you know you want a Christmas card you can go up there and type that in or a birthday card and you can get some really nice ones online and even some of the ones that come built in like this thinking of you card looks pretty nice so if you need to make a card that works really well now you can also do labels and this might be a might be a label one I'm not sure um, and if you scroll down a little bit you can see some more options so there's lots and lots of options here now there's the featured options and there's the built-in options and we will look at an Avery option as our third project I believe but we're going to start out just going to an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and I'd like to show you at this point a couple of the new features in Publisher 2013 that were not present in Publisher 2010. Now I would like to insert several pictures into this publication I'm making so I'm going to click insert pictures and it's going into my pictures folder and I'm just going to grab mm, the amphitheater and the bell and I'm using the control key so I can grab more than one the Calhoun house a Clemson family a library it's probably enough Sykes oh I need a Tillman okay click insert now what happens is it goes into the scratch area this is new and has them all neat, neatly lined up they're all currently selected so if I hovered over and got my little cross I could move them all around in my scratch area or I could even move them all on my page but I'd like to kind of play with this and just show you a couple of other features so I'm going to click off of them so they're no longer all selected and click on the Tillman Hall one and I'm going to drag Tillman Hall over here and I'm going to make him nice and big 
Now, there are a couple of new picture effects. And you can get to those. When you have a picture selected, you're going to see your picture tools format. Um, and picture effects would be right over here. And you've got some shadowing. You've got reflections you can put on them. And glow you can put on them. Soft edges. You can bevel. So you've got quite a few choices. And if you hover over one of these, it's actually going to happen on the selected picture. And you'll see when I clicked on the reflection, I can see that little reflection of Tillman Hall right there. So very nice new picture effects available. Additionally, you've got some new picture, um, I'll call these frames, that you could use. And if I don't pick one of those, it'll leave the reflection on there. So that's just fine. OK, um, I am now going to grab, I think, this bell one. Drag it down here. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, maybe about half the size of Tillman, half the width. And I wanted to show you another thing you can do. If you've got a picture, you can right click on it. And you can select Apply to Background for that picture. And then click Fill. That background becomes, that picture becomes a background. It's pretty nice looking. Um, I'm going to undo that though. All right. And then I'm going to grab, I think, Sykes Hall. And notice as I click on him and line him up, I can see when I get the little pink line that is perfectly lined up with the one next to it. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to maybe shift and grab both of them at the same time and just kind of center them in there. OK. What if I thought about that for a few minutes? I decided, well, I really don't want the bell there. Instead, I would like to replace that and put the Calhoun house. What you can do, you'll notice if you select one of these pictures, you get this little mountain icon. That is a replacement tool. And if I grab it by the mountain icon and hover right on top of it, boink, let go, it replaces it, and it puts the bell back over here. So. That is an, another one of those new features. Let's see. All right. Another kind of cool thing you can do, and let me just put the library down here to work on the library one. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Is you can up here under crop, you could crop it and make it a little smaller, or you can do what's called crop to shape. So I could have a different shape for my library. For example, if I clicked that one, and then double click it. And now I've got a different shape for my library. And of course, I could drag it whatever size I wanted and do some of these other things with it. I could come up here and give it a reflection, too. I'll pick a different reflection on that one. So all kinds of nice new things you can do within here. Now, one more thing. You can um, do some of these things with text. So I'm going to draw a text box. I'll put it like right here. And I'm going to make it nice and big and put Tillman call. Now, you notice when you're typing in a text box in Publisher, you're going to get these three little dots if you run out of room in the box as you drew it. You can drag the box a little bigger, and that will normally fix that problem, unless you're out of room on your page. Um, but on the text tools, you also have some text effects. And you have the same reflections. And let's see if we can see that. I don't know if we can even see that. Um, let's see, what are the other text effects? Shadows, reflections, bevels, and let's try giving that a bevel. I guess you can see that a little bit. Anyway, some of those same effects are also available for text. So those are some of the, the cool new features I wanted to show you in, off, in Publisher. We're going to go back and just do our basic beginner class in just a moment. But um, I'd like to show you a couple of other things. If you do File and Save, you're going to see that all through Office 2013, when you save, 
it offers you the f the default choice is to save to your OneDrive account. Now, this was called SkyDrive until very recently. And you do have to go out to either skydrive.com or they may have it as onedrive.com now and create an account if you don't already have one and sign in. But once you've signed in once on your computer, it will remember it. So I have a choice of saving it out in my cloud storage where I can get to the file from any computer or directly on my local computer or I can add a different place. So I just want to make sure you knew about that because that's a real important part of Office 2013. One more thing, since we've got some uh, objects here that might make sense to do this, um, I wanted to show you the Align tool. If I was working on these, and maybe I got them so they weren't exactly lined up perfectly, um, if I click on one and hold the Shift key and click on another, this Align tool will let you align them on the left side of the page, if you're trying to line them up that way, in the center, the right, top, middle, and bottom. In this case, I want them to be lined up with their tops matching. So if I click top, boink, they're lined up. Now let me just all right, let me just take one of these and squeeze it down so it's not quite the same size as the other one. Now if I grab both of them, I could do a line middle and see how that would line it up across the center of the two. So got all kinds of nice align options right up here under a line. Another thing you can do if you're working with things, like if I wanted to work with these three things all together, I could come up here and select group. Now it's all one item and I can move it or I could rotate it or do whatever I wanted to do with it and it's one item. All right, I'm going to abandon this project and just start a brand new project. And for our second project, we are going to do a greeting card. And notice that you have all of these different choices. So I'm going to pick card. And I can take a look and see if I can find one that I like. Or I could go back to the home and I could look at more blank page sizes and that's going to give me lots and lots of blank options. And if I scroll down a little bit, it gives me publication types. And there's greeting cards as one of the publication types. And now I have some choices of standard blank greeting cards. And what I would like is I would like to take, be able to take one sheet of cardstock and fold it in half. So it's going to be half of the width, so it's going to be five and a half, eight and a half by eleven, so five and a half by eight and a half, and let's see if we can find that in here. So, I don't know why they don't put it as the very first one. There it is, five and a half by eight and a half. So I'm going to have one whole sheet of cardstock. I'm going to double click that thing. Now it's asking me about inserting pages. This will also happen with a lot of those built-in temp with, with, with a lot of those templates. This is actually going to make a two-sided card. So I'm going to have the front, I'm going to have the left and right middle part of it, and the back. So that's a total of four pages. So I need to click yes. So I get my four pages. And you'll see this is my front, left and right of the inside of the card, and then the back of the card. So I can pop around and work on those by clicking on those pages over there on the left side. Now, I would like to make this a holiday card, and I'm going to start out by clicking on Insert Picture. And I have a holiday picture I'm going to use. And it's on my desktop. And I put it in a folder called Pictures. And let's see if I can find it. Snowman. Now, I want this, as I said, to be a a single fold card and the fold is going to be right over here. Since the fold is going to be right over here, I don't have to have any margin. Now it's left a little margin because most printers need a little bit of margin in order to print, but I don't need any margin at all on that side. Now you can see that the snowman is selected with the selection tools. So one way to get it exactly where you want it at this point is I'm going to use my left arrow key. I'm using my left arrow key to get him all the way to the very edge. So 
There won't be any white space on the fold. Now, since I have not used as much margin as they started with there, I've, used, I've got a little more margin that I need. I could grow him a little bit by dragging on one of the four corners. Remember, if you drag on a corner, you won't skew him in any way. But if you try to drag, be really careful not to drag right here, if you, unless you want him to be fat or want him to be thinner, you could dra drag on those um, sides. All right, the next thing I want to do is I would like to put some words in his hat. So I'm going to click Insert Text Box. Right, I'll make myself a little text box. I'm going to put to Todd. I'll make this to Todd. OK, now, since the writing is going to be on top of a red hat, I think it would look nice if I change the color of my font to white. So if I hover up over here under font color, I can change it to white. I want it to be a good bit bigger than what it is. 10 is kind of small. I'll make it hmm, 24. And I want it to be a different font. I want it to be a fancier font. So I am going to see if I can find one. Um, about comic. OK. One more thing. I want it to be kind of parallel with the brim of the hat. So if I put my mouse over this little circle, that will let me twist it a little bit, turn it a little bit. I'm going to move it down just a little bit. Put it just about there. If I click off of it, I can see if I'm happy with it. Mm, I think I might just put it up in this part of the hat. Okay. All right, so I'm finished with the front of my card. Now I'm going to go to the inside. And to go to the inside, over here on the left, you click on the pages. So if I wanted to put things on the left or the right, I could. Well, what I want to put is a text box. And I want it to say, have a cool Yule. And I want my text to be a lot bigger than this. And I think I'll just go ahead and use that same font I used for the other one. So they'll kind of match up. I'll make it 72. Now, you see I have the problem I had before with the dots. That just means I haven't drawn my box big enough. I'll make it bigger. I want it centered. So up here is the aligned center. I want it to be red. Now, what if I didn't like any of the colors that were on here right now? I could go to more colors and get a real specific color, like Clemson Orange or Clemson Purple. We'll do that in the next project. Now I'm going to drag it up a little bit. And one thing I want to keep in mind is that snowman over there is not centered on the page. He's kind of a little bit more to the left because we're going to have to have some margins on the side. So I'm going to kind of get this off to the left a little bit. And since I do plan when I print the snowman afterwards to cut around him, I might want to make sure that this is not, oh, can't change it that way. I think I'm going to change my font size just a little bit smaller. Now, when you're doing your font, you notice it goes from 42, 48 to 72. You could just come up here in backspace, we used to be able to do this, and just type 60. All right, that didn't work. Used to be able to do that. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so I've got it a little bit smaller, and I might even press the Enter key right there, so it'll be a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna again get it a little off center. Now, sometimes I find that I have to do it, print it, move it, and print it a second time until I get it all lined up. Then on the back, I would like to insert a text box. Now I'm going to put handmade for you by I've just got extra space there. You by Laurie. Now I usually make that really small. Maybe 10 is small enough. And I'll make it red and italic. So I usually put that kind of on the back of most cards I make. And then one more thing is I think a little graphic that goes along with the card above it would be nice. So remember when I got the snowman, I already had him. So I just didn't insert, insert pictures. Another option in PowerPoint is online pictures. I'm publisher is online pictures. 
and you can go to royalty free photos and illustrations at office.com so I'm going to look for a wreath to go with the snowman there have all kinds of very nice wreaths and it's fine to use any of these on my card I'm just going to happen to pick the first one and I'm going to squeeze it down really little because it's just supposed to be a little tiny thing on the back of the card. Put it right there. Okay. All right. So now I'm finished. Now, if I would like to print this on cardstock, I would have to, of course, re have a printer I could feed, remove all of the pages from the printer, and insert one piece of cardstock. When I did file print, and again, you'd have to play with your printer to find out exactly how this would work. I'm right now set on a, a black and white printer. Let me set it on a color printer so you'll see the color. There we go. Um, when I did file print with the first page in, when the first page came out, I would need to put it back in the printer and let it print again to get the other page. And it's really important to get it the right direction. If you have it upside down, all of the stuff might end up on one side. So you, again, you may have to play with your printer to find out exactly how that works. But once you figure it out, you'll understand and be able to do it for future ones. And when I finish printing it, I would fold it right here along this fold. And then I would cut it along those lines. And this is a, a greeting card I've used many times myself. And once you get it all lined up and saved one time, you've got it. So a greeting card, second project. Third project is going to be, let me go back here to new, is going to be a business card, a Clemson University business card. Now, that's how I make my business cards these days. I don't order them. I make them. I, my office changes too often to go out and buy business cards. So we'll say new. And we're going to go to more blank sizes again. And we're going to scroll down. And one of the categories down here is business cards. And if we click on business cards, we can go over and pick out an Avery business card, a particular one, if you have some Avery cards that you've bought you know, at your office supply store. Or you could just grab the standard North American 3.5 by 2 and what I do with mine is I don't have the business card cardstock I just have regular cardstock with no perforations or on it or anything so I use that and then I use a paper cutter to cut the um, 10 cards apart when I'm finished this will print 10 cards for one page you can see there's five and five and then I'm just going to click the create button now, I have in my hand a business card that I'd like to duplicate. And when I'm doing this class, I typically hand out several different ones so people could you know, pick what they want. But this is one of the more standard ones. And it starts out with a picture. And this is, again, one I downloaded from those color pages I showed you earlier. And it's a Clemson logo. There it is. Well, there's more than one. OK, I'll use that one. I thought I had it different one though. Oh, I know it's on the desktop. I've got a different one. This used to be illegal, but it's now legal. And that is, this one has a, that's what we used to use. Now some people are using the one with the tiger paw, replacing the zero, I mean the O. All right, there it is. And I'm going to kind of squeeze it down a little bit to make room for some other things. So that's going to be my logo. And I may come back and change that after I get to working on this other stuff. And then I'm going to insert a text box right over here. I noticed you can line it up. That pink line just pops right up. That's so nice. And I can tell by the size of that cursor. Remember, we're working with, instead of 8.5 by 11, we're working by with like, what, 3 by 5 or 2 by 3. Or, I don't remember, one, two and a half. It's very small. So even at a 10 point font, it's going to be big. So I'm going to see how big nine point is. We'll try that. I may have to change it to eight. Here's my name. Now, the next thing I want on here is going to be my title. And I don't want extra blank lines in between my name and my title because space is going to be kind of tight. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and press enter. 
And what that does is it leaves less space between the lines. Uh-oh, I did run out of space. So I'm going to try just opening this up a little bit. That worked. And then I'm going to do Shift, Enter again. And again, I, I got the little dots. I don't have enough space down here, so let me grow that a little bit. And put my cursor back here. I need it a little bit bigger than that even. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to put my email address. Now, the guidelines for business cards at Clemson say you want your name to be Clemson Orange and bold. So to make my name Clemson Orange, I'm going to highlight it and come up here where it says font color. And if I picked that, that would be kind of Tennessee Orange. So I am going down here to More Colors and Custom. And I'm going to change it. And I have the numbers. And by the way, they're on my website. I'll show you that in just a minute. Clemson Orange is 246, 103, and 51. OK. And I want it to be bold. Then for the rest of my text, I want it to be Clemson Purple. So I'm going to highlight the rest of this text. And I'm going to come down here. And you'll see it remembers the orange. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to have to type those numbers again. More colors, custom. And Clemson Purple or regalia is 82.45. And 128. Okay. All right. One more thing. They want your email address to be italic. These are just the guidelines that I found on that page I showed you earlier. And I am going to just bring it over to the right a little bit. There. I think I'm happy with that placement. I might want to bring it up just a little bit. All right, now, in the bottom left-hand corner of my business card, I need to put some other information. So I'm going to insert a new text box. You could insert a text box for each line, but it's fine to do it this way. Now, again, it went back to 10 because that's the default, and I'm going to move it back to 9. Now, if you have a very long name, you might even need to make it 8 or a very long title. I actually have a very long department name, Clemson computing and information technology. All right, they went down to a new line instead of giving me the dots because there were there was plenty of space, but I'm just going to stretch it. And then I'm going to hold shift enter and teaching and learning services is my group. And shift enter and I'm in library 200. It's my office. And then it wants to know your phone numbers. And it suggests if you have an office phone number and a cell, you put an O for office and then your office phone number. And C for cell. And finally, um, if you have a website you would like to mention, you can. I'm going to grow this box a little bit because I got my dots again. Um, and mine is tinyurl.com slash Chaining. And I want all of these words to be purple. So I'll come up here and there it is. There's my Clemson purple. It shows the department as bold and the O for office phone number as bold and the C for cell phone number as bold. Now the one last thing I'm going to do now I've got all the words I need in there. I'm just going to scroll drag it down a little bit. Okay. Now I'll look at this. I believe I'm going to drag this over to the right just a little bit. I believe I could grow my logo a tiny bit. There we go. 
right, so here's my business card. At this point, if I selected File and Print, again, I'm on a black and white printer. If I switch this over to a color printer, we'll see the colors. You'll see what would print would be 10 copies of this card, and I would have to cut them to separate them. All right, so Microsoft Publisher, a wonderful tool to use to create anything you want to print. Now let's go back and do one more little quick thing. We're not going to do anything with this. If you go to more blank sizes, you also have a custom size you can make. So let's say you wanted to make a poster and you wanted it 36 inches wide and I'm sorry, yeah, or 36 inches width and uh, 48 inches height. There you go. So now you could go and make that poster. Of course, if you made the poster, unless you wanted to do a lot of taping of paper together, you would need to send it to one of the plotters. And if you have paw prints installed on your computer, let me do this, you can send it to a plotter. Let me go ahead and start this one. I'm not going to put anything on it. I'm just going to say File, Print. And then if you come down here, if you have paw prints installed, you're going to see CCIT Lab Printer, which is a regular 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Plot 36 is going to be a 36 inch wide plot. Plot 42 is going to be a 42 inch wide plot. So you don't want to make it wider than 42. Uh, if you do that, you will wait a day or two and you'll get an email saying your plot is ready. You can pick it up on the second floor of the library. Now do keep in mind, uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, it will charge you, <laughs> uh, it will charge you a dollar per square foot if you don't have money on your Tiger Stripe card or in your quota. So I'm going to close all these. And the very last thing I want to show you again is my website. Let's come back over here. And that's tinyurl.com slash training. And on this page, um, we have a place where you can sign up for our regular hands-on training classes. The last time we offered this class, no one came. That's why I'm doing this. Um, we have tech talks that you can watch. Another place to sign up for the instructor-led classes. And across the top, I do have a very small publisher page. This is the handout of what I just covered. These are the Clemson orange and purple. And you can click there if you needed to download the Clemson photos to do the projects that I just completed. Well, thank you for joining me. And I'm going to stop the recording now.